La 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 la. Welcome to No More Suits Lab Studio. Um, and um, <clears throat> I'm glad to have you on today. For you know, we've been talking about this, trying to align the dates and everything, um, so that we can make this happen. So I'm finally glad that we got the opportunity to, you know, sit down and talk um, about your book. You know, so for the people who don't know who you are, um, because a lot of people do know who you are, but for the people who don't know, can you, um, you know, just kind of give your a brief background of who you are, where you're from, um, what you do, and how you are, you know, how you got to where you are today? Okay, my name is Ella Wilson, and um, I live in Kernersville, North Carolina. And what I did, I wrote a book about Joel Dudley Sr.'s childhood. And he is a black entrepreneur. Uh, he's passed, he just recently passed in February. And he started with $10, ran it into 35 million a year. And the reason I wrote the book was because I wanted to give him a birthday present. Uh, years ago, I worked for him at Dutley Hair Products years and years ago. Um, and I worked in the store and I took care of his three kids for not a long period of time, maybe a year or two. And after that, um, I disappeared for a while. And then um, 40 years later, when I was trying to seek employment, I had worked at a group home, well, several group homes, and then they shut down. So I called to ask him if he knew anyone that was hiring, and he said he was. So I became his personal assistant and driver and bodyguard and cook and barber and the whole nine yards. And I did that for a while, and he was sick for few years, but I worked totally for him the second time, about 10 years. And he was sick for the last um, four or five years of my employment. But, um, you know, I enjoyed working for him, but I wanted to write a book about his childhood because he had a lot of problems as a child. He was labeled mentally retarded and he uh, had a stuttering problem and um, he was told that he was, you know, slow and he believed what people told him and he, uh, his sisters, he had uh, 10 brothers and sisters and they all excelled well in school, but he did not. He really struggled. He failed twice. The first time it was the first grade and he somehow got himself together and he graduated from high school and then he grad went to college, a and State University, and he graduated and he ended up becoming a multimillionaire with Dudley Hair Care Products. And so I wanted to write this book about his childhood because it was a birthday present that I wanted to give him. I had no intentions of thinking about selling it but he liked the book so much, he wanted me to share it with everyone. And so I made copies of it and I'm selling the book. So when, let's, let's talk, <clears throat> let's talk timeline. So you said you wanted this to be a birthday present. We know Mr. B Dudley's birthday is in May and I know that his 2019 was the, you know, the last gala. So when was this, when was this, uh, um, when did you have this idea to say, like, I want to make this, was this 2020, like during COVID, after COVID, when, when was this? 2022. About 2022. Wow. So you, you, you came up, the, the concept came to you, um, just, you was just generally thinking like, oh, this is a way that I can get back or what? Well, what was that, you know, that initial thought? Well, when I wrote the book, I was just thinking of doing something creative that I thought he might like and for his birthday. And I wasn't initially thinking about 
selling the book. I just wanted to make a book and dedicate it to him. And so he said, oh, no, you got to sell this. I really like it. And he wrote a nice introduction and everything in, in the book. And I put that in there. And he was really happy about the book. In fact, he wanted me to sell this book with the book that he's, he has, Walking by Faith. I am, I can, and I will. Um, it's a book he's had out for since, what, 2007 or something like that. And so that's about it. Wow. So with this title, when you, when you, when you came up with the name, Tough Times Don't Last, right? Yes. When, where did that come from? When did you get the idea? Did you know that you was going to call it that when, you know, you started? Um, I mean, when you when you came up with the idea, like, like, because I know for me with with the alarm shot, with the alarm shot, with the alarm clock, it came to me in the shower. You know what I mean? Like, it was just like I had already started writing the book. So had you already started putting those elements together? Like, talk a little bit more about that, that title. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> well, he had such a struggle as a child. He was bullied. He picked at. He had low self-esteem. Um, he skipped school. He did a lot of things that no one would believe that he did um, to, to not go to class. And so he had tough times for years. Like I said, he failed the first grade. He tried to hide it from his parents. And, you know, just different things like that. So I just came up with Tough Times Don't Last, the story of Little Joe. You know who J. Cole is? I've heard of him. <laughs> he got a line. He's, it's, it, uh, Tough Times Don't Last. <laughs> it's a song called, um, it's actually it's actually a song for, for children. Um, and he says, uh, I forgot the. The, the pre-line but he says something about he he definitely says tough times don't last it's a song called all my life with him and uh little dirt um so that's that's really dope and it, it actually came out after you know your book release so i think that's really um you know phenomenal that you you got that out um and that you have your uh that you did that for you know uh Baba Joe, and as I call him, you know, Baba is like an esteem, you know, it's, it's, it comes from Hindu, um, Hindu culture. Uh, they call their patriarchs Baba, you know, and so uh, Mr. Dudley is like a, you know, Baba to us. And that's one of the things that, you know, um, we, we, we talked offline about how um, we should, you know, honor our, you know, our elders and um, in the in the right light, you know what I'm saying, giving them their right and their proper status and things like that. That's something that's kind of lacking, you know, in our communities and in our families um, um, in these present times, you know. And we have us as uh, a people, we have a lot of power, but we relinquish it um, when we don't um, honor our people in the right way. And I think that the way that Mr. D Dudley um, carried himself. Uh, really set an example for, um, you know, anyone like you talked about him being labeled mentally retarded and him going through what he went through, um, you know, early on in his childhood. And I think it's really phenomenal that you kind of, uh, what's the word, that you brought that out um, and, and highlighted that and made that a pinpoint, you know, because he has his, his book, um, you know, Walking by Faith. And um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, Mr. Dudley has his book, Walking by Faith. <clears throat> but for children uh, and the animation and uh, having these pictures and these characters, right? And like, you know, I have two children myself and, you know, we watch a lot of uh, the cartoons and things like that. And... Um, there's a lot of hidden messages in those in the, in those animations and in those stories and um you know child children's books is such a huge part of the children's life so i want you to talk a little bit about how um the impact that that would you know your book 
has had, not has, not will have, because it's already in the ethers and it already has had an impact. So talk about like some of the feedback that you've been getting, you know, from your book and, um, you know, uh, just kind of the parallel in your uh, idea of what you wanted it to do uh, for the youth and what it's actually really doing. You feel me? Well, I have, um, so I can't seem to keep them in when I um, have advertised the book. It basically keeps selling out. I even have a nonprofit group that wants to purchase 5,000 of my books <clears throat> so they can give them to children in Memphis, Tennessee, who are having problem reading challenges and and don't have computers at home or books at home or whatever, but there's a group that volunteers, they have a lot of volunteers and they want to get these books. And I've had a lot of people that want to buy cases of them. And right now I'm getting the cases together. I'm trying to you know, get more books in and uh, it's had an impact on the kids, the ones that have, uh, their parents have purchased a book for them because we have children that have discipline problems. They have low self-esteem, depression, suicide, and, and then the bullying thing has been going on since um, Bible, biblical times. The, you know, this is nothing new as far as life goes. And um, so some people can handle bullying, some people cannot handle it. And, and the pressure now is like a big deal. Uh, and it's happening everywhere with kids with suicidal thoughts. And we've had kids that have committed suicide. But if they can somehow see where somebody had a lot of challenges, had the same type of issues growing up as a child, and then they became very successful as an adult, they can see hope at the end of the rainbow, I guess. That that's very huge and that's very impactful. Um, you know, uh, and that, and that like so, like what what was what? Okay, let's talk. I want to really kind of talk a little bit more about that because there is a lot of youth out here that that's dealing with. They come from single parent homes. They um they have these suicidal thoughts. There's so much stuff in the community. Like it ain't it ain't really like much like my, my last interview I did with Porsche, we was kind of talking about the same thing, like the lack of, you know, exposure and like how um, the kids are not exposed to people like Mr. Dudley on a day to day basis. You feel me? So what what's your message? Like what, what's the message in that book? Like and and tough times don't last. Like what is something that you can take from the 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 moral and and give to like why should parents get this book like why should like me I'm a parent so what is the hidden message in that in that book that that can kind of speak to those children well a lot of things happened in the book um little joe's house burned down and with the having 11 children in the house total and his mother, father, and grandfather lived in a three-room shack after the house burned down. But before they moved into the three-room shack, they um, it was just a problem for them being all together. They had to separate all the kids and, and they had to stay at different people's homes until they could come up with a plan for a little uh, three-room house that they added on to it and they moved everybody back in but it was just the fact that the parents have got to talk to their children the children have been for years um taking their ideas and their thoughts and getting advice from their friends and they need to be getting advice from their parents and grandparents and relatives that care about them that are older and wiser and can give them the correct information. 
So it's like the parents have got to pay attention a little bit more to their children and ask them questions about their day. And sometimes the children are afraid to talk about their day or they just won't share. They'd rather share it with their friends. Um, and as long as you don't judge the child while they're explaining to you what's going on and you just have to listen, it's, it's about listening to them and seeing what needs to be done. So little Joe, his parents had, you know, 10 children that were very successful and they didn't have to help them as much as they did little Joe but they didn't know he was doing as bad as he was and he was showing out and getting in trouble at school and he was hiding the notes from the teacher that the teachers um, gave him to take home. But then one day his father found out and it was on from there. You know, his, his father was, they were so angry at him, but they didn't know what he was actually going through with the bullying and being embarrassed because he had a speech impediment and that he was a slow reader, all, all of the above. So low self-esteem and all this problem that he was going through. So he, um, the parents helped him, he, you know, once they found out that he wanted to try. And so they were very spiritual people. So I have um, a lot of Bible verses. I have 10 Bible verses in the book. So it's like a Christian children's book is what I kind of call it. But um, so the people can get their information from that. Yeah, um, that's very unique. And another element, Ella, that um, I'm seeing, excuse me, consistently with everybody that I talk to from um, you know, Portia from studying history, um, just studying like how Napoleon Hill did this success formula, you know, um, what, what is an absolute success formula that's like, you know, like how Napoleon Hill has a law of success, right? Um, what is what is that that key element and what I'm finding in this formula is education, right? And right. it's just something about education, like okay, because you got, you know, um Carter G. Wilson has the miseducation of the Negro, right? But then you have so many different facets of education. And um one of my uh esteemed teachers, uh, we call them master teachers, is uh, Enfudishi Jehutimus, and he talks about how um, education is to bring out, you feel what I'm saying, to bring something out of you, right? And so like with, with Mr. Dudley's story, with his parents, um, they were so big, they had a definite, a definite chief aim, for all of you said they had 10 children. 11 um, total. For all of their children to 11 total children to to go to college and to to get an education and then you see um w how Mr. Dudley went to A&T and we're going to talk about your your background with your your father and everything um and then not only that like how that just opened up Again, going back to the exposure. So talk a little bit about the impact that, and because, and that's why I say the miseducation, because like, even with our masterminds, that was a, that was a school for us. That was a schoolhouse, Mr. Dudley's garage. You know what I mean? That was, that, that's a form of, of education. And that has had an impact on me. You feel what I'm saying? Just like with my confidence level, you know, cause I'm, I think different. I think different. And so like, that was a safe space to say like, okay, it's okay to think different. Oh, we like your philosophy. We like the way uh, you, you're you thinking. It's not out of the norm. I mean, it's, it, it's not normal. However, it's like, it's pushing us, you know, to say, okay, 
this is how you become phenomenal. And um, again, to bring out uh, things that you didn't even know. So are you coming from, a, so you said your, your mother, before we got on, on the interview, you said your mother taught at Dudley in, in Greensboro. Right. And your your father taught at A&T. Right. So uh, talk about your upbringing, your, your upbringing. Like tough times don't last for like Ella, Ella Wilson, you know, um, what impact did, did that have on, um, who you are today as a person, and and, uh, and again, looking at it from a, a success formula, um, the, the impact that education, the right education can have on your life. Well, when I was younger, I did not, I don't remember ever reading a children's book. In fact, I had to go through the encyclopedias for, I'm dating myself because people your age might not even know what an encyclopedia is. So I had to, my aunt, <laughs> I had my mother's sister taught middle school. So she was the one that, you know, gave me these workbooks to fill out when I was young to go through the encyclopedias and learn the meaning of words and things like that. So that's where I got my education besides school. So I had to do things like that instead of reading children's books. But it was interesting and I enjoyed it, you know, because I enjoyed learning. But everyone doesn't really like to read and, and to, you know, learn a lot of new things. And that is uh, what I found and talking to Dr. Bailey, that was, um, he was a Dean of uh, Education and Economics at Winston-Salem State and at different schools, if anyone knows who Dr. Willie Bailey is. And he was saying that um, a lot of the kids nowadays are illiterate. And illiterate is saying they're not illiterate. They, um, illiterate means they can read, they just don't want to. And they have to be inspired to actually read. A lot of times nowadays they're on a screen, they're given laptops or pads or whatever at school instead of actual books. Isn't that what they do now? Instead of yeah. getting books? Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't been in a, in a classroom. Like I don't, I don't know, uh, the culture of the classrooms in the, in the school system and like in the public school systems anymore. But, but you're, you're absolutely right. Um, when it comes to that, I spoke to a gentleman um, in passing older gentleman, and he was saying that they're not, they're not even teaching the, the, the children um, cursive anymore. And um, he said, because of that, because we were talking about constitution, um, and how important it is for the children, just really anybody. Um, but again, you know, our focus on this call is the children. <clears throat> They're not teaching the children constitution anymore. They're not teaching them cursive, how to write in cursive anymore. And that's just training your mind to, to, to think out, outside of the box. And, um, you had you had said something about how you know the illiteracy. This is actually my first time hearing that that term, but you said a lot um, with etymology. You know, learning the meaning of words and how they're you know properly used in their in their proper text. Um, I'm a poet. I'm a writer myself. So I, I have to study words. I have to like I have to study the the flow of words and um, the sounding of words and the root of words. And you know, I was just actually Candace Garrison. So I was telling her about the Candace Queens of Moreau and how they ruled empires all over the world and how they had armies and her last name is garrison and garrison means a army a fleet of army and so like again when you study those words you know the ancient 
phrase, you know, in world history and in, in, in ancient Kemet and um, Ikuto is man know thyself. So like even when you break down, like even with my name, like Darrell, it's Arabic. But I wouldn't have known that, Ella, if I didn't read. You feel me? It's a uh Muhammad the second and the Turks when they um took over the uh, not the Byzantine Empire, but the Roman Empire in Constantinople. And they talked about the house of wisdom, which was called the Dar al Haqqa. And I and and so by me reading that, I'm learning about myself, right? And that's not only my name, it's my mother's name. So therefore, my name is Ibn Daril, which is the son of Darrell. And typically in Arabic culture, the son of is typically tic, you know, when you hear people like Ibn Khaldun, Ibn Batuta, you know, people like that, that that means they're the son of their father. However, for me, it's rare that you hear people being the son of, you know, calling themselves, having a title as the son of their mother. But again, that's how deep that, you know, words and literature is. And one of the things that I've been pushing, Ella, is how can we get, how can we make reading fun? How can we um, exercise that? And um, I think that you are, you're doing that already. And you, um, it, it starts with the youth, you know, like at a young, at a young age, you know, getting them like, so what is your target audience for this book? Well, I have um, been getting feedback from everything from a three-year-old to a 16-year-old. And they seem to be getting information, you know, out of the book that helps them, they say. But what I find is if the parent let's say the mother likes to cook or she has recipes or cookbooks or whatever, or even online, you can go online and get recipes. And if she has the child to come and read the recipes to her, read something that they are interested in. Because some, uh, some children like to cook, they want to learn how to cook. And that's just a simple thing, you know, but there are ways that you can get the child to read what's on the, um, the recipes that are online or in a book or whatever to you while you're cooking and they can enjoy that and they don't really realize they're reading that is compared to school and if they have an interest in something maybe the parents can get some sort of book that talks about their interest and get them to read to them because a lot of parents read children's books to their child before they go to bed let the child read it to you. Hmm. And then you tell them you, what you're getting out of it and you all have a good discussion, then that can stimulate their interest in reading, especially when they learn there's so many different things they can get from the library and learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it has to be, um, you know, like just, just where the world is now. There's so much stuff that's going on in the world. And like how you were saying with the advancement of, technology is kind of handicapping um just again i say to youth but see with me and my partners what we did like back in this was like 2017 we put ourselves back in kindergarten you know and so like reading your like you know reading your book and again like you know, now that I'm a father, I'm going back and watching these, you know, these cartoons and stuff that we watched when we was growing up. And like, I'm getting messages as an adult from it. So like, uh, you can learn from anything, you know? And so like, I think that even with, with, your, with, with your book and like how you said, having the children read to and having that, making it a part of the, the household culture, right? So like for the last two, years or so since right before my daughter was born um i've been reading to my children you know um even in the even while they were in the womb even when i share when he was in the womb i was reading to him and so like i see the impact that that has on him because he's requesting you know he can't he's not at the age where he can read 
yet, but they're practicing it, right? Even with my daughter, like she'll have a, a book, like a children's book, and she'll open it up and she just knows she reading. She knows she read. You can't tell her that she not. She just do, da, blah, blah. But see, that's good because it's getting them in that that habit. And right. then when and that's what you had you had said that with um with the with the uh you you said that with um I got lost my train of thought. However, um when you uh practice that Napoleon Hill, I gotta I have to I gotta I gotta keep bringing my guy up. You know what I'm saying, Napoleon. Right. Um he talks about the hypnotic rhythm, right? And like when you make this a part of the culture, oh, this is what you had said. You talked about how it's the parents' responsibility for the children and the, the troubled youth to actually not only take time to hear them out, but like like with my mom, God rest her soul, um, when when I was growing up, she made sure I was in church every Sunday. You feel what I'm saying? I could not not miss church. You know what I mean? I had to be in I had to be in church on Sunday, you know what I mean? On my, and on Wednesdays. She made sure I was there. And then she also made sure that I was reading the Bible, you know, like when like before bed and things like that. So because of that, you know, like fa families aren't doing, they don't even sit at the dinner table anymore, Ella. They're not even sitting at the dinner table. So like um reading reading having masterminds in the house. You feel what I'm saying? Like we had our community mastermind, but everything starts in the house with your, you know, with your family and have discussions. Like you read for, like, just like we did with our mastermind. We read Think and Grow Rich. We read Rich Dad Poor Dad. We stopped in between paragraphs. What does this mean? That's getting your brain. I say, I got a saying like knowledge is sports. So it's like, okay, let's, let's take time and let's break this down. Let's make this let's make this a cultural thing. Like uh it's a book called uh, Wonderful Ethiopians that I, I I quote a lot. Um Jay Rogers, who is a profound scholar, these are these are the authors from like the early 1900s, right? And that was a time when we didn't have technol uh, you know, television and um all of the technology that we have now. So like during that era, that was the only way to get information out was through articles through books you see what i'm saying so um through radio so this was the only way that we were able to know what was really going on in the world so that was a time period where we had to read right and so um i think that uh i'm so grateful that you got to do that uh for for baba joe um because his he's he's one of a kind um, you don't hear too many stories like, you know, like his story uh, that's that's out, you know, and then I think it's phenomenal for you to uh, have, uh, you know, just highlighted his uh, his career, you know, him, you know, his early his early childhood. I think a lot of people, um, they kind of leave that part out of the equation, but that has a huge impact on who we are like me, I'm a, uh, I'm, I do lecture halls now because my mom, when I was a kid, used to take me to lecture halls when I was, you know, when I was doing it, that's, that's the desire element in that. So like, um, I want to kind of shift the conversation a little bit. Let's talk about the business. Let's talk about it from a business perspective with the children book. Um, you had this idea and shout out to Nipsey. Nipsey said, Nipsey Hussle said that like, whenever you focus in on the money, God leaves the room. Like, so if you're doing something for, for money, you know, that, that God element leaves the room. But when you doing like for you, you wasn't even trying to make, you wasn't trying to make a profit. You just was doing this out of the, the kindness of your heart for, you know, our, our, our Baba, God rest his soul, God be with him and his, and his rest. Um, and you just wanted to do that out of the genuineness of your heart. But then the businessman that, that he is, you know, even in his final days, like, 
He's talking business. We have masterminds with him his last days on this earth. You know, um, he talked business to the yeah. day he died. He, you yeah. know, um, kind of talk about it, you know, so we talked about it from a spiritual side. From when, when you locked in, what was that like, you know, um, from reaching out to your uh, editor, the illustrators, you know, for people who may want to do a children's book and make put that into the ethers, you know what I'm saying, in, in the future, what advice do you have for them? What does that look like, um, you know, <clears throat> on your end? Well, you have to know what it is you want to write about. What is your passion? What... Um... You know, like Mr. Dudley always said, what do you want? Why do you want it? Write it down. And a lot of people are not sure of what they want. So that's why he was saying you write it down because you can really focus on what you're trying to do. And he always advised people to get a mentor in whatever field they wanted to go into. Um, find someone that's doing exactly what it is you want to do learn the negative and the positive of this career and find out details about it. Because once you find it out, you might decide, I don't really want to do that. You know, that I thought it was different than this. I thought it would be making more money than this. I didn't think I'd have to work this many hours or whatever. And then you can change your mind before you just lock on to that career. And then you start hating it once you get in it. So you need to do a lot of research. And so people need to know what it is. If they want to write a book, why do they want to write it? What do they want to write it about? Is it going to be a self-help type book? Is it going to be an autobiography? Is it, what is it that you want to get across to the people? And so that's really important. Like your son, for example, he wants to write a book. He's four years old. The only reason that he would think about anything like that is because he's observed you and children watch when you don't think they're watching you. They're looking to see what you do. It's not what you say, it's what you do that that, that gets them to you know, react or respond. So you know, if, if people have books in the houses and the children watch you reading, they watch you reading the Bible, they watch you, you know, or are you going to be on your cell phone all the time, ignoring them, and they're on their cell phone, then, you know, there's no real communication. But if you want your child to get a good education and all, they've got to be interested in reading, whether they can do it on a screen or do it with a book. Then, and that's one way is to let them see you doing it, let you, them see you reading and not just the most important thing in your life is what's on the cell phone, then it's going to be readings not going to be that important to them. So they've mm. got to see it from somewhere. Mm. You know, they've got to learn. But when people want to write a book, you've got to know what it is you really want to write the book about. And there's not necessarily a lot of money in writing books. People think, oh, I'll write a book and I'll make a million dollars. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> You have to have something that people are really interested in. You've got to have a way to market that, you know, what is whatever it is that you want to do. So there you go. So yeah, that's 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 very true. And um so children can write books, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And 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 I wanna ask you about that because you said that. You connected with the Dudley family early on, you know, when Joe Jr. and um, his daughters, they were younger. Like right. how Joe Jr. was 11 years old. I think Ursula was seven and uh, Jania was nine months old. So I, I took care of them for a little while. So, so to that point, um, Joe, Joe Jr., he started selling Dudley products at right. an early age. Right. So there's no, there's really no age limit with, you know, being an entrepreneur, you know, in this case with, with a book, 
Um, so kind of talk about that, the impact that that can have on a child's life. Uh, you know, just like for not just with, with my children, but just say other children that may be in that same age group, um, there's opportunity for them to, you know, create books and, and write books and put that out. What advice would you have for, for, for young children, for the youth um, who may, you know, want to put a book out into the ether, a uh, children's book uh, at an early age? Because, you know, we think, oh, you know, you, you start a business, you got to be, there's like, you know, like a drink, like a drinking age, you got to be 21, you know what I'm saying? You got to be 16 to, to operate a car, but you hey. said Joey was young, young Joey. He, he taught me how to use a cash register at 11 years old. I was about 17, 17. Yeah, I was 17 when I got a job working for Mr. Dudley. And um, he was Dr. Dudley by then because he had six honorary doctorate degrees. And But Joe Jr. taught me how to use a cash register. Now imagine, and he had his own bank account at 11 years old. Well. And, Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> yes, he had his own bank account. So when he tried to get his mother to give him money for something, he wanted some tennis shoes and he wanted his mother to give him money, wanted her to pay for it. And she said, why are you asking me? You have your own bank account. You can go get your money out of your bank account and get those shoes. So he really wanted to save his money. So when you teach your children the importance of money and especially if they get a chance to do some type of work where they get rewarded with money, then they can learn the value of money much sooner and, you know, and how important saving money is. That's one thing Mr. Dudley instilled in his children. His youngest daughter saved $25,000 when she was 12 years old so that she could save it for college. And she put it up and didn't touch it. Why are you frowning up? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's unheard of. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm not saying that, like that's that's just really twenty five. That's a that's a bar. You know. Yeah, it, and it, I'm like, yeah. I got I got a daughter, so it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, she saved that money up. You're and, talking that talk, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he that's a headline. To her. And people would think, well, you can just give him the money, give her the money. Why, why does she have to work? You know, and he said, because you have Mama to Mama may got, daddy may got, but God bless the child that got they own. Right. Come on now. Come <laughs> on. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So she was, she had a bank account and everything when they were young. And it was their money that they worked for. It, they may have gotten gifts or if, you know, sometimes people give children gifts at Christmas or at birthdays or whatever. They learn to put their money in the bank. Take a little bit out for yourself, but don't spend everything that you get. Put it in the bank and save it. Saving is so important because you never know when you want to get something, you know, something that you really, really want and you can get it yourself. And they learn how it feels when they have, they can just do what they want to with their money in a positive way. Let me, let me, let me chime in on that to the, to the point of saving. What I would recommend to that, since you brought that up is to get, um for children or for um you know anyone you know we since we're talking about the kids like i think this is really dope children being entrepreneurs mm -hmm. put your money yeah i can't tell you what to do with your money however when you when you when you save your money i would recommend and i'm just talking from experience what i've done um putting your money in a gold and silver pool. Well, what is a gold and silver pool? Okay, a gold and silver pool, it's like a, uh, it's no different from a bank account, but it's an option. It's an option account and it's growing with the 
the rate or the the price of gold and, and silver. So when I first I brought my first silver in 2020, right before COVID hit, I had been telling myself that I was going to buy gold and silver just from listening to a podcast just like how we're on right now. Mm-hmm. Rich Dad Radio, um, Robert Kiyosaki. That right there intrigued me to, uh, it gave me that that spark to say, okay, I want to do this by the time I'm 25. I was 24 at the time. Um, so I made my first purchase of, of silver, and you can look at the stats of the price of silver and how it's been rose since then. When I purchased silver, it was at twelve dollars per ounce. Now and it's at like if I look up the price of silver today, I'm gonna do it while we live. The price of silver today, price of gold just reached over twenty five thousand twenty five hundred dollars an ounce for the first time in, in world history. Um just read like last week. Um but when you put it into a gold and silver pool, I have a account with Kitco for my gold and silver pool. That's where I purchased my first gold uh or my first silver metal from I should say. Today silver is at 2933. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's double. It's over double since I first put it into that. And the thing about gold and silver that's different from stocks and bonds and everything like that is that it can't hit zero, right? Nobody's ever going to give you gold for free. Nobody's ever going to give you silver for for, for free. Nobody's going to ever give you uh, titanium, uranium, guns. Nobody's going to ever give you that stuff for free. It's always going to have a value um, to it. So when you're saving, be strategic because we see what's happening right now in the world. Like um, they had a headline that came out last week that said that everybody's social security got hacked, bank account. I'm a victim. Um, they tried to uh, take 900 out of my uh, account. Somebody in the Netherlands tried to um, take you know money out of my account. So having these, like with, with Kitco, it's off, it's a, it's, can be classified as an offshore account. But like, are you saying, like, if I would have known that, if we would have known that at, you know, five, six years old and our, again, going back to the parents, like the parents, you know, have to be the ones holding them accountable. Like, again, with 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 Joe, uh, Baba Joe and Eunice, like what they did with their children is, is, is so phenomenal. And that's education. This is education. So education is not just textbook education, you know. Um, you can have different, I learned from the streets, you know, with so many different facets of, you know, education, you know, I can learn from nature. I can learn from a bird. Right. right. But um, when you put that in the, in a pool, what it does is it's kind of like holding your uh, cash reserve and it's like, it's going up with the price. So you get in that capital gain. Um, and then when you sell it, you can either, when you sell it, you can cash out and get your your cash and get a check, or like just like a bank account. You feel what I'm saying? But when you withdraw, that's considered a sell, and when you purchase, that's considered a buy, right? And so when you deposit into the account, that's a that's a buy, um, and then you can convert to the actual metal if you want to. And I've done that. I've done both. Well, I haven't cashed out but I, I i have did the exchange where it all happened at once you cash out and then you use that money to purchase and then get the silver the actual tangible cent silver or gold coin whichever if you have a gold pool or a silver pool but i think that that would be very strategic and then again so this is good wisdom for young church or anybody who wants to you know do uh strategy just we're talking about books here you know what i mean now we can it's so many different you can have a lemonade stand or however you make your money right but, um for children's book um talk about um how you connected with your illustrator and because that's that's um a very important part to the children's book um the the key a key person is the illustrator and typically 
the way, and I'm sure it was with you, um, you know, typically children's books are co-authored by the illustrator. So you have the, the, the writer and then you have your, you know, your, your artists. So what was that? Uh, how, how did you go about doing that? Um, what, how did you make your connection? Who was your illustrator um, for the people that don't know? Um, and how did y'all connect? And um, why is it important to have one? All of that. Just kind of give some background on that. Okay. Um, Mich Michelle Nicole Taylor is my illustrator for the book. And I met her through Every Dot Black. For anyone that knows that company with Jimmy Davies. And um, it started out, we had meetings at Mr. Dudley's house. Uh, every week we had mastermind meetings. And that's where like-minded people who were, um, who wanted to learn how to be successful in their businesses, no matter what kind of business they had. And everyone got together and they, they um, got information from Mr. Dudley. He would speak and there would always be um, someone in the audience. He would get them to get up and speak and uh, about their business and what they were doing. And he gave them suggestions and, and things um, about how to become successful and how important it was to have a plan and to organize what you're doing, know what you're doing, make sure you have someone you can turn to that is, can be available for you to help you with your business. So um, Michelle Nicole Taylor was at the meeting and um, she had done her own children's books. And so because of that, um, I got to know her, she had mentioned it, but then when it was time for me to write a book, I know I needed um, an illustrator and I tried a couple of people and it didn't work out. And then I happened to see the book that Nicole had written, Michelle, Nicole had written, and I liked the pictures that were in her book. And so I just asked her if she would consider illustrating the book that I wanted to write. And so she did that um, and the rest is history. Wow, wow. Yeah, and so um, that to me sounds like a mastermind. <laughs> that sounds like a mastermind. Is when when two minds come together, forms a third entity. I'm quoting from I went a devil called the mastermind. The, and so for our and so that third entity essentially would be this production. Um, that you all created. I wish I had it. Can you can you hold up a tangible copy of your book? So you see people, you see what happens when great minds come together, when they align and see also in this mastermind, it says a foreword by who? <laughs> Dr. Joel Dudley. Dr. Thing? Joel Dudley. So he's still talking to us. And that's such a, it's so, it's so phenomenal and it speaks to um, what they say is appreciate people while they're here, appreciate your elders, get as much wisdom and knowledge that, that you can um, while, while they're living. Um, and you, you've you done that, um, you know, you, you I, I've witnessed you be by Mr. Dudley's side um, you said for these last 10 years, is, is yes. that right? That's right. So for the last 10 years until the day he died, you know, you were um, such in a huge part and perhaps prolonged his life, you know, um, just by sticking by him and, and being by his side and meeting his needs, taking phone calls for him, setting up meetings, uh, you know, preparing the coffee for for us, for the tribe, uh, doing just so much, being there uh, with his therapist and um, sitting with him through his darkest hours and, um, you know, the, the the stuff like, you know, people always are around when it sound good, but when it when stuff get the ugly and, you know, with, with the changing of the diapers and all of that, you were there. 
And that speaks to, I think it speaks to humanity. Um, and it, it, we have to highlight that. And I have to highlight that because, you know, uh, shout out to my my, my good man, um, Tenemezo Coro, who uh, actually inspired my book, to learn, inspired me to write. He, he made it cool for me because um, he, he, he's a Nigerian. He's Nigerian. He lives in, he actually lives in Greensboro. And he told me, he said, yo, you got to write a book, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I share that story over and over again, but he set the example. He came out with a book called Dichotomy and he had a release party and he had, um, different people come out, the book sold out at his release party and they were throwing money and doing all of this. And I'm like, you know, you know, we're talking about troubled youth. I am the troubled youth. You feel what I'm saying? But him setting that example and making this a cultural thing, I'm like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I'm like, this is like, you know, I feel like that's like a rap artist, you know what I mean? Like, so that's again, a, a cultural aspect. And even with hip hop culture, it starts from the Ritz. But one of the things that Shinameza told me, and he's so wise, he said, um, it's not about, you know, cause he used to connect with a lot of um, big big time people. Um, and he said how he would do it. He said, I wouldn't go up to the person. I would go up to, like how you said, the bodyguard, <laughs> you know? And even with how I connected with Baba Joe, I connected, I mean, though I knew him and I mean, though I went to the mastermind and stuff like that, I connected with Ella Wilson, <laughs> you know, because uh, you're equally as important as Baba. And so, um, you know, because you're his spokesperson, you're in his ear and, you know, y'all together every day. And it's a human, it's a humane element to that, you know, uh, and and just in general, it's it's a lot of Ella's out there, you know what I mean? Who's around the the big the 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 Joe the big Joey, if you will, you know. Um, but the most important person is that person that's right there by his side, and that was you. And I think that's so, um, you know, very profound that y'all put this piece together. Um, this, you know, before he transitioned, and I I think that uh, everyone who uh, is of Eden, I, I call our people Edenic, Ethiopian, Kushik, Kushik, Kushetic, <laughs> um, Bourbon, <laughs> Bourbon. I see, I challenge people, Ella, too, because again, we talking about knowledge and sports. I challenge people to, because we typically just say, oh, black or uh, African American or Negro, try to describe our people in another light without saying those words it's a challenge that's just you know so for our people the original people i think we all um like again like jay rogers said with um with with uh Drusilla dungey houston who was also Drusilla dungey houston who was also a female author right from the early 1900s jay rogers said every negro in america or in the world should have wonderful ethiopians in their shelf, on their bookshelves. So I think that it's the same thing for uh, your book. And I think that is a lot. And like he, how you said, you know, just in, in closing, um, highlighting what you said, that parents should have their children reading to them, right? Um, reading these books to them and then having these discussions about how, okay, here's what, here's how Joey overcame these obstacles. Here's what he did. He took this, he took, um, he took this, uh, sugar, honey, iced tea and turned it into perfume. You see what I'm saying? He took these negative elements and, and used it to create positive elements. He took the principles that he learned from farming and incorporated that into creating his own manufacturing plant. <laughs> that's about it, take lemons and turn it into lemonade. That's it. <laughs> and so that's that, that turn it into a positive. Yes. So people 
um, who's watching this, it may be somebody watching this 50 years from now, you know, um, and that's the, the beautiful thing about books, you know, like even with Napoleon Hill's books, you know, his books are still in rotation. Um, get this book. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're when trying to figure out what children's book you should get, because there's millions of children's books, get this one. Um, and it doesn't just have to be, you know, we're not just limited to our, I think it should be a uh, mandatory for our people to get it, but other cultures too, it, you know, Europeans, um, in Asiatic, we are the Asiatics, you know, humanity. Right. I'm speaking to humanity. There's no color line. Jay Rogers got nature knows no color line. This book is for everybody. These are principles for humanity that's in, encrypted in this book. I've read it to my children. And again, my children with, with them at, at an early age, it's another good book I recommend. I just want to throw in the mix. It's called The Development of the Black Child by Amos Wilson, right? It starts before they come out the womb, parents. So for the parents that's getting ready to bring life into the world, start reading to them early. Read it over and over and over and over again. When they're born, read it over and over and over. Put it into their subconscious mind early, <laughs> right? So that that way you're, you know, like going back to the biblical text, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they shall not depart from it. Right. So in that loop with you, Miss Ella, I think that your parents had had if they you know, not saying, you know, I don't know how things would have been if they were not in education, but I think that there's some sort of trajectory there with your parents being in education, teaching at, uh, your father teaching at A&T, Mr. Dudley going to A&T, you connecting with Mr. Dudley, your mother teaching at Dudley uh, High School. I think that that has some, a huge part in the success of who you are um, becoming a, a author, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, how we, we discussed it. it don't matter if you're five year old or, you know, not to name your age, but it don't matter if you five or 45, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. We all have the same, you know, opportunity in this world. And I think that, um, you know, you, you getting that out, it's just, it's, it's, it speaks volumes and, um, it's carrying on the the legacy of Baba and to the next generation. And I think that um, that he's always going to be remembered. I think we spoke the other day about Ibn Khaldun. If it wasn't for Ibn Khaldun, we wouldn't have known who Mansa Musa or Sandi Atikita was with the, the great Mali empire, right? So we have to give thanks to that because, like, you know, though um, Baba has his walking by faith, this, you know, this lit his soul up. Um, um, tough times don't last, and it's is written by you. So, um, thank you for that, and just let people know, um, just where they can find this book and where they can get it, and and things like that. Okay, well, um, no more suits is one place. And you have the, um, what is the email address for that? Oh, yeah. So you just go to, for if you're going to get it off of our page. Oh, shit. I, I stopped sharing it. But that's fine. If you're going to get it off our page, you just simply just type in No More Suits uh, in your Google tab. Uh, the the full link is nomoresuitsllc.com. Um, if you want to go directly to the bookstore, you'll put slash uh, bookstore um, and you'll see Ella's book on there is currently sold out but once we you know we get some more in we have, by the time y'all we know this airs we should have more in inventory so that's how they will, can you know come get it from our page uh, I mean um, and is there any other facets uh, if you want to get it like say if they want to get it from you directly well also um they can go to 
shop every dot black. Okay. Um, my book is on that website too. And then okay. I have my own website, but it's shout out to Jimmy Davis. Jimmy Davis at every dot black. So shop every dot black. Uh, the book is on there. And also, I want to point out that uh, Jean Williams wrote a poem and put it on the back of the book. And it is really, you know. Um, Can you share it with us? Yes, it says, on our journey, there are a few things you should know about God and little Joe. As little Joe grows into a man, there will be things he won't understand. God will never give up on his plan. He will always have him in his hands. Are you ready? Let's go. The story of little Joe. You already know. Wow. From ancient Melrose to the Trey Foe, they all know about little Joe. <laughs> yeah. And Williams was the lady that inspired me to write a book. Um, she came in to talk to Dr. Dudley, and she told him that God told her that a book needed to be written about his childhood. Hmm. See, that's where I was getting at when I said that initial thought. There it is. <laughs> yeah. And wow. so I thought, well, if, if I'm going to write a book, I might as well give it to him as a birthday present, you know. So I still wasn't thinking about selling it. But and she now you know, it. now you know, if you present that to, to the businessman of the 21st, the 20th and the 21st century, He's right. gonna say he he you know how he used to do hmm right and then he get to thinking you know he's always thinking about that business he's that's that's the thing that I really value I, I say business over politics because businessmen we get it done we ain't gotta talk about it we ain't gotta sell you on anything we get it done and Mr. Dudley got it done he got it done he got it done. I tell he you, when he was in the hospital a couple of times, um, we were we were in there 13 days for one of his um, visits to the hospital, and he couldn't hardly sit up in the bed. But I bet you he sold seven books that week. <laughs> he said, "Bring me another book over here," and he had the nurses and the aides were just all around, sitting around talking to him learning what they should do with their life. He changed their lives. He made a big difference in their lives. But the first time you ever met him, your life would change anyway. But these people were coming back and forth in the room. I guess the other patients were wondering where their assistants were because they were always in his room. And then before he died, he had people around his bed. He'd have them reading. And he, then he'd say, well, what did you get from that? You know, man, Miss wow. Ellen, that man, he's still selling books eh? as a dead man. <laughs> that's 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 the thing about him. Like, he still Bell would come in with a, um, a whiteboard and he'd be writing on the board in the bedroom, mm. have chairs wrapped around the bed. And Mr. Dudley enjoyed every minute of it, he enjoyed helping people and making a difference in their lives. And that's and that's powerful. And again, that speaks to you know education is non non traditional. They in the, they they turn the hospital room into a classroom. Right. You know, we could have a mastermind. You know, the brothers that you're talking about, Doctor Bailey and you know, Baba. Again, it's they were outside of the box, right? And you know, before we got on our call, I was telling you about when I actually interviewed him and he was talking about the Greensboro, I asked him about the Greensboro four and he said that didn't have nothing to do with us. And what they got to do, you know, they need to be sitting in our establishment and he didn't have time to go sit and beg for no plate. <laughs> he said, we're going out to get it. And that speaks to, you know, these, these people out here trying to get these reparations, go get your own reparations. Go get your own equity. You know, there's nobody stopping you. There's nobody, nobody told Mr. Dudley, well, you can't start a business because you're black, brother. 
are you're African American. No, brother, you no way you cannot start that. No, and Mr. Dudley. But he yeah. didn't, you know, right. they didn't. He 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 spoke. It's a long poem called If by Rudyard Kipling. And it says that if you can talk with, if you can walk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk or talk with kings, you know, lose the common touch. And I forget the rest, but it's pretty much that right there speaks to Mr. Dudley. You know, um, he spoke, he walked with the common man. He spoke with kings. He spoke with nobles. He spoke with world leaders. World leaders knew who he was. Shout out to ESTG. He said, I'm known around the world like the McDonald's art. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so that's how, that can nothing hold this man, that Mr. Dudley back. And, you know, him coming off of the, the, the era of, you know, Dr. Fuller and what Dr. Fuller did and the, as he said, the many United Nations that they started with Fuller product and passing that torch down to Mr. Dudley. And like, the, that was one of the last things I told Mr. Dudley when God chose Moses and Moses said, well, I got a speech impediment. Surely I can't lead your peace. I didn't tell you that. He said, I'm the one that gave you your tongue. <laughs> And so, you know, that's the power that, you know, Dudley had on our, you know, on our people and everybody who, like how you said, that came across him even in his final days, his final hours was impacted by this man. I, I remember when we were sitting in the room with him, this was like day two before, because I was there the last three days and I think it was day two, he had got a call from a sister in Texas and said that, Mr. Dudley, because of your philosophy, last year I made a million dollars, you know, um, and I can't remember the sister. Um, do you remember? Um, you know, no, well, not sure. and she was. I just know she was from the Texas Republic, but she was saying, "You made me a millionaire. I made a million dollars just off of your principles, right?" And so that that right there is very profound. And I think that that just speaks to character. It speaks to leadership. It speaks to charisma. Um, you know, what an uh, honor code, it speaks to integrity, right? And um, there needs to be more people like Baba in this world. And it starts right here where we're talking about with the fountain of youth, you know, um, having the inspiration from a young child, like how you said, his daughter made 25K at 12 years old. That right there, I'm just, like I said, I have, I have, I'm a father, I'm a girl dad, as they would say. So like that right there, it speaks volumes, um, you know, and, you know, <clears throat> I, we could go on and on and on and on and on. Um, but yeah, that, that, that right there, I was going to say last, before we, you know, uh, Last thing I want to talk about. How has it been, you know, for you uh, as an author, your your career as an author and, you know, getting this book out? And, you know, I know you as the author of the month um, with the with the Chronicle and you, you did that interview with uh, the, the Honorable Buster Brown. Um, so just kind of talk about, you know, your this your success uh, with Tough Times Don't Last, you know. And did you ever foresee <laughs> that this would be who you are, at, you know, you being a, having a esteemed title of all, as author? Like, Well, I've always wanted to write books, but never had I ever thought that I would write a children's book. That had never crossed my mind. I had all kinds of titles. I wanted to do self-help books and different things, but um since uh, Miss Williams came in and, and talked to me about writing a children's book, I felt I was pushed into writing this book. And then I, you know, figured out that the best thing would be to do that for him as a birthday present. And then I enjoyed writing it to the point that I feel like I want to write a series of books, a series of children's books, all related to 
Dr. Dudley and, you know, the different things that he went through because the children are really suffering in schools and they don't want to tell their parents. They're afraid to, that, you know, their parents are going to say something to the school or if they're being bullied, they don't want the bully to find out because they're afraid it'll make things worse. And they, like I said, they depend on their friends, which is not good. So um, I just feel like writing a book is something I want to continue to do, writing books. Wow. 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 That's really, that's, that's very wise. Um, and what, what was, uh, what was your reaction um, to, you know, the Chronicle? Um, and then what, like, again, I want to kind of hear, I mean, you know, what have the people been saying? Like, what has been like the, you know, your common response or something that stood out to you from, you know, the people who've, who've actually read this book? Well, and I know you had touched on it at the beginning, but like, what is something that like, that you heard that, that is really like, wow, this, you know, it's really heartfelt and, you know, fulfilling to, you know, your purpose? Well, um, I'd get response from the adults and the children. They really liked it. They love the color pages. It's the Michelle Nicole wrote the book. And um, Mr. Dudley wrote all this mm -hmm. in the book. So this, that was what he um, is forward for the book. But the pictures are colorful and the children really, it kind of held their attention to the different pages here and they really enjoyed that. So it was a combination. It's more pictures than is text in here. And the, the colors drew the children to it so that they would read and they wanted to know. And they felt sorry. It showed that, you know, when he made an F, how he hung his head and how embarrassed he was. And the kids were laughing at him because the teacher was fussing about him not doing his work in school. And it, on this page is when uh, the neighbors were talking to his mother, saying that he's not going to amount to anything. Don't, don't pay him any attention. Just keep up with your other 10 children. And this is showing how angry he got most of the time when these kids were bullying him. Mm -hmm. and with his head down at, uh, at the tree. And then uh, it shows where, you know, he had problems with relatives and there's another F. And it's just different things that went on. And this is a picture of the teacher. In those days, uh, teachers were allowed to spank the kids. With a paddle. Now. <laughs> and so they were they were allowed to go to a tree, tear off a branch, and whip the child with, you know, with a tree limb, or you know, they tear off the the um, the branches and and get whipped with that. Mm. And so this is the teacher get thrown what he had gone. She made him go out and get his own switch. And it was too small, so she threw it in his face, and then she went and got a tree limb and tore it down because she was so mad because he had knocked the furnace over, and he he just acted out because he was so angry. And this is him hiding behind the tree when the bus so the bus could pass and he could skip school, thinking his father would never find out. And then this is when his father found out, and he was really upset. This is when his house burned down to the ground and, you know, the different things. And this is the, the three room shack that they had to live in. Wow. That almost looks like the actual picture. Right. It is was, it in a, I got it right here. Welcome back. Yes. Is it's it, in is, there. Yeah. So Michelle drew this. That's how good an artist she is. And she was able to draw here. it. Here it is. Okay. I don't know if we could do a comparative. Yeah, bring it down I... there, right there. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Look at that. 
Let me put the light on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's wow. good. I see it clearly. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. There y'all are, people. You know. Uh, yeah. That's 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 very. Shout out to Michelle. Um, we we might have to do another interview and have her included on there to talk about her side. But that okay. is that's that that um. You could tell that, uh, and you said 2022. That was yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. So now, when did the when was your actual publication date? I have to look it up, but it was. Um, it says 2022. I don't see a month on here. Um. So. <laughs> It, Cause I remember it I probably, got, I got my copy at the beginning of 2023. It was in May because we got that book to him to show him what we had done. We hadn't even put a cover or hadn't gotten a cover or anything, but Michelle and I got that book together just days before his birthday on May 9th in 2022. Oh, wow. Wow. Cause I mean, I mean, a lot of research went in, I mean, like detail, I'm looking at, I'm listening to the details, like, the house burning down and um mm -hmm. the, the 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 teacher you know uh you know telling him to go get the switch so that you did you interview mr Dunn, or this is just stuff that you just genuinely knew from well, being around him it's in his book on the pages one through six in his book hmm. about his life and then he talked about it all the time you know and he had a picture at the house of his the three room shack and you know he always talked about his in his speeches he talked about his aunt pauline and how she lied to him and you know he's already got low self-esteem and i already have problems at school then you got an aunt that's gonna promise you a bicycle and she didn't and she um abused him physically because he was clumsy but uh, in her house, and so he just had it from all sides. Yeah, yeah. man. It, it, I mean, it, it, I kind of, you know, as an adult, I'm kind of dealing with the same thing. Um, and so, like, it's, it's it's motivation to hear, you know, just being around Dudley again. Like, you know, looking back on it, you know, his background. Maybe that's why I was influenced by him. Is because, you know, and you spoke, you speak to this all the time about how, you know, not doing, shouldn't do business with family and, you know, people, the people who you grew up with, those be the people that, that try to keep you down because they only see you how they see you. But um, it go around the world, you know, and again, like you said, world leaders is, you know, valued Mr. Dudley and seen him for what he's worth. So, um, you know, it's not just children that this can influence, um, it's everyone. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's, that's profound. Um, I think, I think we pretty much touched on everything. I just, uh, I, again, you know, just kind of close, like, you know, I know I said closing three times, but this is such a good interview, but I just want to let you know, like, this is why we do what we do to bring this stuff out. Like, again, education is to bring out, um, you know, and as a fellow author, I know that dialogue is so important. It's so important to have the dialogue about these uh, literary works and uh, the foundation, because you could just uh, look at a book on the shelf, but not know the, the history, the what it took, um, the, the, the late nights, uh, the inspiration, the purpose, uh, all of that. Um, so I like to highlight that, especially with authors. We started it probably about 2021. We started a podcast for authors. It's called um, Wealth is a State of Mind. Um, <clears throat> the Wealth is a State of Mind podcast exclusively for authors uh, to, to come on our platform and to share they you know about their book and again um 
we we have to is so important because nobody on this earth is you know promised tomorrow again i just went to a funeral yesterday for the sister alexia um taylor actually and you said michelle was a taylor too right wow so there might be there may be some connection there on uh, the taylors are deep i know a lot of taylor chris taylor um shout out to my brother chris taylor uh, my son is a descendant of some taylors as well um so you know lexi she lost her life early right um at 27 years old so we have to take advantage of life um and these moments because uh you know tough times don't last um and we don't live forever so we have to seize the opportunity to just like how you did with uh capturing this book um while mr dudley was living having him actually hold the book he touched the book he felt the book he vouched for the book he approved the book um that speaks to again it speaks to humanity and um authority because some people like uh it could be somebody from china and say well we're we're gonna do a Joe Dudley children's book and they can go out there and uh, do a book. I mean, they do it all the time, you know, with, with prominent names like, you know, Michael Jordan and Maya Angelou never sat with her, never talked with her, but making money off of her name. But you did it from a genuine perspective. You actually did it um, originally for, the, for, for Baba and, um, you know, him actually encouraging you to go out and put it into the ethers into the world and sell it uh, so that that uh that's that is it speaks to character and um just consent that's the biggest thing um that i'm learning now is about consent don't move against people's consent and even with the articles like with journalism you know if you're not sitting and you're talking and not talking with the people it's not as authentic Right. Um, so that's why we we did, you know, we do this and I'm going to pull from this, you know, interview and take it and put it into an article. So if you're watching this, um, subscribe to our articles. Um, you just go to nomersusllc.com. We, we just put a new subscription link on the on the uh, main page so you can go subscribe there. You can we have the subscription links throughout our articles and stuff like that. And when you do that, you actually are on our, you know, you join our mailing list and it automatically goes out. Um, and so this is, <clears throat> today is, we got a, today is the 22nd day of the eighth month of 2024, August the 22nd. Um, and this is, we typically come out with our publishing, our publications, article publications on Thursday. However, uh, with me traveling and everything this week, um, we kind of delayed. Uh, and we are a small team right now, but we're growing. We're looking for more writers. We're looking for more um, people to share stories in the community. Um, this 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 particular series that you're going to be included in is going to be the, from the year 2020 to 2024, um, where we, I, like, really – Everybody that we've interviewed has been Carolinian based, <clears throat> a Carolinian based people. So, you know, we're like a family, if you will, um, just in the Carolinas. That's, you know, again, that's our nationality that's just been laid dormant because nobody talks about it. But, uh, you know, for this first volume series, you're going to see Carolinians and what we're doing in the world from people who started shoe companies to uh, the last lady I interviewed, she had, she started an AAU basketball team and her approach to it is similar to your approach to the book. She wasn't looking to start an AAU basketball team, but she did, again, it was based people based. And, you know, this speaks to, uh, I'm, I don't want to say the word, the, um, the poll, the poll and the tricks, politics, <laughs> shins, the electrician, politicians, <laughs> the people who are supposed to represent the people. <laughs> okay. Right, right. But I feel like people like you, uh, Dr. Dudley, um, Portia, um, 
shout out to my brother Damari. We um my, my niece covered the story on him. Um, those are the real representatives of the people. Those are the spokesmen of the people. Y'all are the spokesmen of the people that you you did that. You know, um, you coming from genuine approaches. I feel like that right there has a bigger impact. And I'm not down like, you know, if that's what people do, let's go. But I just feel like the power is in what y'all are actually doing. Like, again, like how Mr. Dully was saying in the hustle, you know, nobody wasn't going to get in my in my book, the alarm clock in the in the in the prologue. I say, um, change ain't easy. I talk about change. I'm like, it's not, the preachers are not going to cause you to change. The politicians are not going to cause you to change. The focal group are not going to, even the masterminds. You can go to a mastermind, but if you're not, if you don't say, okay, it's like if, if you go hear Dr. Bailey speak and he's telling you about um, a, a soft trust and he's telling you about context and, 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 and con what was he say content and context right if you just go in there and you're taking things out of context you're not going to do anything and the, the bible says it and he used biblical principles um to teach and his teaching mechanisms not to preach but to teach and so he right. teaches from the bible he doesn't preach from the bible he teaches the principles so if you're not implementing uh these principles then nothing is going to change it don't matter who is the president, you know, uh, Mr. Delhi had more influence than the president. <laughs> we well, not going to go there, but you know, he, he did, but you know, and on our people. And so, but at the same time, you know, shout out, I, I'm going to shout out, um, you know, to the honorable Betty Clausen. If she would have ignored the calling, you know, just just think about that you know her children because of the impact that baba had the that call you know the simple call go to charlotte <laughs> you know start the charlotte office her daughters went to brazil they're bilingual they can speak they know the culture you know and they still have the deadly dcu up in chicago to this day that's the real impact no politician can do that. Even even Mr. Dully couldn't do it because she, you know, if like the Bible says, all are called, but few are chosen. So she didn't accept the calling, right? The impact. And so our people have to know this. You see, you, you follow what I'm saying? Like you have, it starts with you. You govern your your body first. You you govern your body is your temple. So you have to govern your temple first. And you have to choose to to do better and and choose to say, hey, I want to change. Hey, I want to do this. Hey, I'm a okay, Mr. Dully. Uh, this was a gift for you, but yes, I am going to make this a book and I am going to sell it and I am going to put it out there. That's bold for you, Miss Ella. You know what I'm saying? You stepped out your comfort zone, you know. And now look at you. You know we we're, we're still talking about it, and you know you. A book is glass is carries with you for life. Like Mr. Dully released his book in the late 90s. And again, like I said, even after he's gone, it's still selling. That's powerful. That's powerful. The powers in the people. And we are the most powerful people on this planet Earth. Right. So um um thank you for taking time out your schedule uh to meet with me and um to do this i'm gonna craft together a nice article i've been very long-winded in my last articles so i'm gonna try to make this concise as possible um okay. but at the same time there's no excuse if it's a thousand words in the article good break it down read these articles at the dinner table print it well you can't print it out well we we are about to start having it where you can print it out, but it's also gonna be in that volume series. Um, we're gonna consolidate, 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 consolidate. That's one of my favorite words now is consolidation. Um, we're gonna consolidate all of these texts so that uh, you know, it's a volume series called uh, I think I got it on me. Yep. Oh no, this is not it. That's not it. It's a, it's a volume series that I got. It's called the 
the the Moravians amongst the Cherokee. Um, and it's a 13, 13 volume book. Uh, I got it somewhere in my library. But however, that was some 300 years ago. We still talking about it today. So with these volume series, they gonna that's gonna you know I know that it can last a lifetime, um, you know. So that way they'll be talking about Mr. Dudley's article is gonna be in that included in there as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we doing at the suits uh, with our publications because you know it's just on the internet, but the internet can shut down. So that's just really like our storage you know, plan. And so, and that's equity that um, is for the author and you, you know, the the customer. <clears throat> so yeah, that's a, uh, we, we'll talk a little bit more offline about that equity inclusion program, but for anybody who wants to share their story, um, you know, you just get, you go to um, no more suits, LLC at gmail.com. If you, if you want to inquire about, you know, how you can, be a part of this uh, and share your story. Um, and yeah, so that's that's all I got for you uh, today, Miss Ella. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we'll come back. We could, you know, do another conversational, maybe do another one in person where I can sit in between you and Michelle and, you know, interview y'all. Maybe I can, you know, we could reach out to Jimmy Davis and make it a, a, an event. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing about Mr. Dudley he said, you got to change your mindset. That's the bottom line. Change your thinking. Change your attitude. And that will help people become successful, but they have to change and grow. Absolutely. Yes. So, yeah, all of Mr. Dudley's books is on our web page as well. Um, for the audience, y'all, all of those books are on there. Napoleon Hill's books, the ones that we referenced, is on there as well. Um, so yeah, that that's a that's a collection there. Uh, Tough times don't last. Walking by faith. Uh, S. B. Fuller. Um, where you at? Uh, it's, it's somewhere, somewhere. I got them somewhere. Here. It's right here. Is it? No, I don't got my glasses on. That's why I'm looking crazy. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's going on <laughs> but all of those books are there on the website um so yeah y'all y'all get those books i rec highly recommend all of those uh especially dr fuller's book so in that order i would get sb fuller i would get um walking by faith i would get tough times don't last as a dual package you know with the walking by faith um i will yeah, read them think and grow rich out with in the devil um we we have those uh, the original that's not because they have the ones with Sharon lecture but the the ones that we have is the ones that is from the original manuscripts from 1938. Wow. Um, so I would get those. That's those very really good books. Um, what what else is from that Napoleon Hill? The Law of Success um, collection. Um, I meant the the Law of Success. The original Think and Grow Rich too, the one that Napoleon Hill actually um, had when he first put it out. Um, so those are, you know, we have more books from the Napoleon Hill Foundation, um, and we're we're growing our library as we, you know, as we speak. But those are some good, you know, for business for the people who, and for the business category, those are some good books there. Um, and then, you know, your book is the only children's book, but it also can, again, classify as a business book as well. Um, Self-help, you know, so. Yeah, like it too. So it's not just, they like to read the text of it and the children like the, the pictures and the adults like the Bible verses. So it's a, it's a coffee table book. It's what Dr. Bailey says. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that 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 sums it up. Um, you know, again, thank you, uh, Miss Ella. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for uh, all that you've done for uh, Baba, and you know, for everybody that's around him, and all of our, you know, our tribe as a part of the mastermind. 
Uh, we give you your flowers, you know, while you're here. You are uh, equally as important as Baba, um, you know, and for what you've done and what you are doing um, and the message that you're you're putting out, it has an impact. Uh, you know, I, I'll close with the egalitarian. You are egalitarian, which is an equal in law, and women have to get their uh, appreciation you know, because it always in the back behind every strong man is a strong woman. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that y'all are in a marriage or relationship, but just in general, like, you know, women, you make the world go round in philosophies of what y'all do, the dedication, um, how, you know, um, just all of that, you know, I, so it's so important. So we, we appreciate you. Um, and, We'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Close this.